Okay, so pretty obvious that files can also be used on foam, but I thought I'd just go for a few uh, examples of different types and the sort of effect you'll get. Now, although this is a file, it's probably fairer to call it a rasp in that it's very, very coarse and aggressive. And uh, this is generally the sort of thing that you use at the beginning of a piece. And say I've rough sawn this uh, to give a, an approximate shape, this will allow me to And of course, you, the, the nice thing, unlike the saw, is that you have a profile that you can work with. So this is quite a, a large radius. And of course, something like this is much smaller. And so you can see as I'm working, I'm almost keeping the file in exactly the same position and moving the piece into it. And that has the benefit in that even though it doesn't look particularly dangerous, if you slip it'll still take a pretty good chunk out of your uh, knuckles. So it's quite unpleasant. Um, these are finer files you can use for beginning to detail those bits and get rid of all this sort of uh, coarse. And you can see it beginning to smooth out. These also have the effect of almost compacting it. Uh, so again, this is one thing that's worth remembering in that uh, when you're working with something and you want it to be a certain size, generally work in an excess so that you can sand back to, a, to the right size. Um, the final thing to mention is these little tongue depressors, which I've covered in two grades of sandpaper. One is a coarse one, one is a smooth one. Now you might have seen me using these on uh, plastic, but it works just as well for finishing some of the the small details like such. So again, if you keep working with different coarse, from coarse to, to fine grades, you get a pretty good finish. And then of course you can start working on top of that with fillers.